cleansed and filled me that I might thy channel be. Channels only, blessed Master, but with all thy wondrous power flowing through us, thou canst use us every day. that full surrender no thou hast streams of living water from our inner man may flow channels only blessed master but with all thy wondrous power flowing through us thou canst use us so good to see you tonight. Thank you for coming and being a part of our Wednesday evening Bible study and prayer. Looking forward to getting into God's Word and uh, looking forward to praying with my church family tonight. And um, a lot of things to pray for, um, and we want to focus on each other's burdens and needs. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Brother Bob, would you have prayer for us this evening? Amen. You may be seated. Young people, you are dismissed to patch the pirate. Like a few of them were not here tonight, but will you guys have a good time that are going? Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, you guys have fun. We'll take some prayer requests up here in just a little bit. A um, lot, a lot, a lot of hardship this week. A lot. Um, all right, Brother Brian, would you come up? It was exciting. Sunday night, the church voted to take on two families, uh, missionary families, the Hine family. Uh, they work with claim ministries. They go to churches and do projects for different churches. And then also the Salvatierra family to Bolivia. So I had the privilege to call them and tell them we are partnering with them. And a very exciting times for the church. And here's one of our missionaries. Uh, which one did you choose tonight? The Villa Reels to Mexico, would you read their letter for us? Dear family and prayer warriors, serving the Lord is a blessing and we can always rejoice in God's goodness. He has allowed us to be used of him and has given us strength to keep going forward in the ministry. My wife and I were so thankful that Dr. Gomez, Brother Swear, and with their wives were all able to come down and visit us. They brought an open 40-foot trailer loaded with boxes of Bibles in John and Romans. What a blessing to receive all these supplies. We have been able to provide thousands of John and Romans to a number of pastors, missionaries, and preachers. Some are working in the rehabilitation centers. The seed is in the barn and we need to get it out. Sister Josephina, a member of our church, one day called and asked my wife if she would be willing to visit a lady that possibly was ready to accept Christ. One evening, Julie and Sister Josephina made the visit. They explained the gospel message to her again and the need of receiving Christ as her Savior. Praise the Lord, Estella decided to put her faith in Christ to save her from her sin and hell. Please pray for her. She has been battling with cancer. Her family are staunch Catholics and will soon oppose her. A young man named Kevin came to church several months back and we began to pray for him. 
a dear brother in our church had spoken to him about putting his faith in Christ and following God rather than the world. Kevin was encouraged to come back and hear another message from God's word and that same evening after the service, I took Kevin aside and asked him if he would like to come to Christ and be saved. He said yes. I then presented to Kevin and explained the whole plan of salvation. That evening he chose to receive the Lord in his heart. Kevin expressed that he now knows that he is going to heaven. Please pray for him. He has no father and his mother is living in immorality. She carries the saint of death on her neck. We believe that she is involved with the drug cartel. One day I received an email from a dear Christian lady who, who shared that she was praying for us as we ministered her in Mexico. At the end of the letter, she asked us if we had a need that she could pray for. I mentioned to her that we needed chick tracks and how they are such a help and blessing to the ministry. Well, to our surprise, we received another email asking where to get them and which ones we would like to have and where to send them to. Not too long afterwards, we received two boxes full of chick tracks. We were so thankful and encouraged. Our folks love to pass out these tracks. They also love to read them over and over. We pass them out at the rehabilitation centers and they always ask for more. Thank you, thank you Sister Rhonda for your wonderful help in sending us these tracks. God bless you all and thank you so much for your faithful love, support, and prayers. The Villarreal's. Amen. A soul winning family and they love the Lord and praise the Lord that we get to be a part of their ministry there. and. Um, I think it's wonderful. Today I was on the phone with uh, another missionary family that we support, um, talking to them about how we can continue to support and even expand into some of their uh, extra ministries, different ways our church could help. And uh, so there's a lot of things down the road, but thank you for being faithful to give. And I hope that doesn't become old to you, hearing that somebody got saved. Remember the day you got saved, and if you didn't get saved, you'd be on your way to hell. And uh, so we need to be excited about this. And I know it's a Wednesday night, but we can still be encouraged when somebody gets saved. I want to take us just for a quick moment before we go to our next song. Um, I do want to pray. Um, this seems to become all too often for us as a church and around our country. I want to take a moment and pray for those who were, who were massacred in, um, in Texas. And uh, really breaks your heart to see the news. Um, showing pictures of these young people. And uh, could we just take a minute and pray right now uh, just for these families that God would somehow work in these families' lives and pray that our country will realize the problem is not in these different areas. The problem is our hearts and the direction we're headed. Brother Dallas, would you stand for us and pray out loud?
and we're going to sing him 269. What a good song to go along with that prayer. Where could I go but to the Lord? We'll sing just the first verse. Shake hands and greet one another. 269. Okay, we can sing an octave. Okay. Living below in this old simple world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation sore, where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? for my soul, needing a friend to help me in the end, where could I go but to the Lord? Let's go ahead and shake hands and greet one another this time. Last one? Yeah, we'll, I'll get up here with this. We'll, we'll not do the last one. All right, if you'll find your places. All right, as you're finding your places, you may be seated. You may be seated. Danny, you can stop that whenever. Thank you, sir. All right. Last Wednesday, we had a race to see who was the last to their seat. We might have. A <laughs> it's not going to be Miss Connie. It's not going to be Miss Connie. Oh, it's Miss Birdie. <laughs> we need a prize for the last person to sit down. Then I'll never get any of you to sit down. All right. Wonderful. Um, uh, this Friday night at 6 o'clock, we have our game night. 
Um, how many of you are planning on coming? We, we might do something uh, a little bit different. If you're planning on coming, just so, just so I have an idea. If you're coming Friday night to the game night, okay, good, 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 okay. Um, we, we might... We might do something a little different. We might just order a few pizzas or something. So we're going to have a good time. Just bring a snack, and um, we'll, have a, we'll just have a fun time. And the purpose of the game night is to get to know one another and uh, see who the real competitive people are in the church. Um, I saw a, a picture with a table flipped over, and uh, it had Monopoly pieces all over, and it said, enough said. So we're going to see who the competitive people in the church are. Um, if there's any tables that are flipped, we'll know you've been reading the gospels lately so um we'll have a good time june 12th brother caleb garraway will be here we'll have a potluck following that service and i hope you all make plans to for sure be here i want you here every sunday but make sure you're here that sunday that will be really good we're gonna have vacation bible school uh june 20th and through the 24th there's a sign-up sheet on things we need on the back table um there's a sign-up sheet back there um if you'd like to fill out um something uh, to bring we need a lot of things to come in a lot of candy um independence day picnic the fourth of july um we'll have it on july 2nd at our house uh, you're more than welcome to come we'll have things on the grill and we'll just have a good time usually we have a volleyball game for some and i'll have horseshoes set up for others and then some will just sit around the fire and uh, we'll probably have s'mores and uh, we'll just have a good time a fellowship for the fourth of july uh, picnic there ushers go ahead and come forward the uh it's been a great month of giving continue to keep that up um being uh continue to be faithful to give to the lord missions giving is doing great you continue to do that and uh, god will bless the church and uh, you keep giving first give to the lord second you can give extra i believe on top of that to worldwide evangelism and i think you ought to set a large portion of your budget to give to the lord and uh, put him first in every area of your life especially finances because finances is our probably closest thing to our hearts and I think setting aside to give to the Lord is vital and important and I pray you will. Brother Sean, ask God to bless the offering and then we will uh, sing one more song after that. Father, taking that up, let's turn to page 387. I belong to the king. Do we have that one? 387? Okay. Let's sing the first and last verse. So wonderful to know who you belong to. Amen? Amen. Belong to the king. I belong to the king. I'm a child of his love, I shall dwell in his palace so fair, for he tells of its bliss in heaven above, and his children its splendor shall share.
his palace above. I shall dwell by his glorified throne. All right, thank you. Um, tonight um, is a night we need to... Um, take time for prayer requests, and there's several on the list tonight. I want to highlight a few. Um, also, um, how many of you know or remember Dick and Fern Ellison? Okay, several in here. They have, they've been members for, Miss Fern's been a member here since almost its beginning, um, but they have not been able to come the last few years consistently due to health. Um, we found out the other day, Brother Dick passed away, um, so do be in prayer for the Ellison family. The funeral is tomorrow at Parsons Funeral Home. And the viewing is from 12 to 1 for friends. And um, at 1 o'clock will be the funeral service uh, tomorrow. Um, so if you'd like to come out to Parsons, um, be in prayer for the Ellison family. We can't, it wasn't completely unexpected, but still, it's, it's very hard um, to go through that. Also be in prayer for the Waters family, Troy Waters. Uh, passed away. It's a relative of Betty King, um, but Troy's was very unexpected. He um, drove himself to the emergency room, and um, I don't believe his kids ever got to talk to him after that. Um, just had a lot of issues and um, passed away. His funeral is this Friday at um, 1 o'clock also, um, so do be in prayer for the Waters family. If you would tonight, Mike Reynolds, some of you read in the, the text, uh, the, the prayer chain, um, he did fall Sunday night. He fell right after church. He was over, he had lunch, and then he went and put flags up for Memorial Day at the cemetery for veterans. And on his way back to his vehicle, he fell and rolled a little ways and ran into a tree. He's all scraped up. Well, he couldn't get himself back up, so he spent the whole night on the ground. Um, at the cemetery. Um, he was trying to stay warm because Sunday was very cold. And so he crawled to his car, which was running. He couldn't pull himself up. So he sat by his car all night. And um, really, I saw him uh, yesterday and um, still, still shaking quite a bit. Um, very traumatic, things like that. Praise the Lord, it wasn't colder. Uh, but do be in prayer for Mike Reynolds um, uh, with, with his fall. Um, also, uh, Mr. Miranda, um, uh, Efrain and Man, uh, Miranda, uh, Vinell's husband, had a knee replacement surgery today. And um, last I heard, uh, they had to push it back. And so there were some complications. So be in prayer for the Miranda family. Several more on the list here tonight. Um, but who are you praying for uh, this evening? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, and this is Bri Brianna Emley. Oh boy. All right. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. In June? Okay, and that was June what? Okay. 
All right, Dallas. Okay, pray for John Peeler uh, down in Florida there. And also, Brother Dallas, you were talking about um, back at your former church in Maryland, you lost a, a good friend, uh, the Mon. Okay, pray for the Mon family. All right, yes, sir. Okay. Amen. Pray you don't lose your mind. Yeah. Well, that is an answer to prayer because I know the burden of Jim is not to, he does not like to miss the services and praise the Lord. What an answer to prayer. I'm glad, glad you shared that tonight. Praise God. Let's continue to pray for Jim as he transitions into this new position. Um, continue to pray for Carolyn. Um, next Wednesday, a week from today, have some more tests. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll find out exactly what direction we're going with the cancer and things. So be in prayer for Miss Carolyn um, in those regards. All right. How many of you have unspoken? Thirty-three unspoken. All right, Miss Valerie. Okay, Josh is uh, Brian and Valerie's son. He'll be traveling up here uh, for a short while, so be in prayer for Josh Brown. All right, anything else tonight? All right, take your Bibles tonight. After we're done uh, with God's Word tonight, we are going to take some time to pray together. Um, I hope you'll um, take your country. Um, I don't even know how to pronounce that one. Um, you gave me that one on purpose, didn't you, Kyron? I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to pray for that one. <laughs> um, but let's be in prayer for our world. And um, we are going to take some time. What I'd like to encourage you to do when we split up to pray, um, it is a prayer time. So find someone you can pray with. And uh, when you're done praying, let's keep it very quiet because I don't know about you. I get distracted easily. And when other people are talking, when I'm trying to pray... Um, I know God hears, but it really distracts my focus that I'm entering the throne room of heaven. So if you're done praying, be very silent. Um, also, 
be considerate too. I have the patch club coming in. I think they're going to practice afterwards. So make sure, uh, don't take a lot of time to do small talk. Um, get right into prayer time and uh, talk to the Lord. And um, we're going we're gonna to get that going again tonight. I hope you'll stay. I hope you'll pray together as a church. And uh, I think it is a... Uh, I think this is the power that we need in our church um, is from prayer. Luke chapter 8, if you would, tonight. Daniel will transition over to the other microphone. Thank you all for being here tonight. I praise God. Sing and to, to worship the Lord together. Luke chapter 8, I hope you'll take a Bible. Uh, I want to point out just a couple things, some things that I've looked over in the past. As we go through a book and we go a little closer and we study deeper, um, to me, it points things out that I never read. I've read them. Have you ever done that? You've read something, but then you read it again, and you're like, I completely missed that. You know, I, I, I must have been, you know, thinking about Oreos afterwards, right? I missed that one completely, right? Sometimes we do that, and it's important when you study God's Word. Uh, at times, read quicker. At times, I think every time you read, you should always go back and read, especially if you've read it fast. Um, really understand the context of what God is saying here. I don't know how far we're going to get tonight, but I do, I, I, I think this is vital. Luke chapter 8, um, we've seen um, Luke has given us historical facts from eyewitnesses. From what I understand, these, these next few verses, we're going to find somebody who I wonder if Luke did not give eyewitnesses account to. That we're going to find a woman's name in here we have not seen in any of the other Gospels. And uh, some people think that this is where Luke, the uh, author here, the physician, may have received some of the uh, eyewitness areas and different things. I want to look at that tonight. Up to this point, we've seen in the previous chapter, the Sermon on the Plain. We've seen much of the same teaching from the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, by the way, Jesus' teaching did not change. The teaching was the same. Now, he used different things, but it's not like Jesus changed his mind every other day. Anyone know anybody who does that? They say one thing one day, and then they do something that different the next day. Okay, you're looking at someone who does that every once in a while. Just ask Brian as he tries to lead singing. Um, sometimes I change it up on him. Um, but uh, Jesus' message here, the Sermon on the Plain, you remember we saw him heal the, the, the centurion's son, and then we saw him kind of transition. When Jesus is going through, everybody's excited. He walks to this funeral procession that's coming out, and he has compassion on the woman. Nobody asked him to do anything. He raised the young boy from the dead, and the Bible says he took the boy back to his mother and uh, just signs of compassion and signs of his power. And then you saw the woman uh, last week. She came to Jesus when he was in the, 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 the religious elite, if you will,'s house. And this woman came to him and uh, came to knelt down and uh, shed tears and washed his feet with her hair. And you remember uh, the nobleman was like, hold on a minute, you must not be a real prophet because real preachers, they don't get that close to people of that type, you know, that type of people. And uh, Jesus would tell, uh, explain to him, no, that's true sacrifice because she understands who I am. And Jesus said, uh, you know, I, I forgive your sins. Go on. Now we see in chapter 8, we're going to see the last bit of uh, the Galilean ministry, if you will, in chapters 9. I believe, it's, uh, I believe it's later on in the chapter, I think 50 or 51. The Bible is going to say Jesus is going to start heading to Jerusalem. And on his way, he's going to do different things. So from uh, chapter 10 onward, we'll see Jesus start heading towards uh, uh, Jerusalem here. But let's look at just a couple things here. Look at verse 1, if you would, tonight. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, notice these names, you'll recognize a couple, Mary, called Magdalene, just saying where she was from, out of whom went what? Seven devils, demon possession, and Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him of their substance. 
Now, we're going to look at this in just a little bit, but the idea of minister is the same word we get the word deacon from. And uh, later on in the New Testament, we're going to see the idea of the deacon, but the, the idea of ministering here, we're going to look at all that here, here tonight. But we see um, sometimes we become so overwhelmed with the economy for good reason. Sometimes we become enamored with fame or other success. Sometimes for good reasons, if you will. Sometimes we become angry at how God acts in our world today. Sometimes religious people, listen, sometimes religious people overwhelm us. Any of you ever been overwhelmed by someone who claimed to be religious? Maybe a little taken back because they did not know what they were talking about, but they were super religious? Sometimes those things happen. But I want to point us back to Jesus' economy. In Jerusalem at this time, in Israel at this time. Do you think the Jews were experiencing a free reign? Uh, no, they had Roman rule. Do you think uh, there were people back then who were not enamored with fame? No, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Do you think there were people back then who were angry that God had not sent the Messiah yet? Sure, there were several still looking, even though they didn't see it was Jesus. Sometimes religious people overwhelm us, same as back then. But I want you to see Jesus' message in all of this. We forget that Jesus did not operate under ideal conditions, right? Jesus was not operating in this area that was so free and easy and no problems. Jesus had his share of problems, didn't he? I want to point that out. I think this is very important. With all these excuses, Jesus set in motion the local New Testament church, and he's going to teach these 12 men in the end of verse 1. But let's look at his message and his mission. He's going throughout every city and village preaching public Heralding, or if you will, public, uh, public teaching and showing idea of heralding the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. His message, he went to normal everyday people. These 12 men, none of them held major positions. I guess you could say Matthew held a position as a tax collector, but he was hated by the people. But these were just normal, everyday men. But he came to fulfill the Old Testament. I want you to go back to Luke chapter 4. We've looked at this several times, but I want you to see this tonight. Luke chapter 4. The message he's going to be sharing with them in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, which he's doing, to heal the brokenhearted, which he's doing, to preach deliverance to the captives, which he's doing, recovering of the sight to the blind which he's doing, and to set at liberty to them that are bruised. You remember he's, uh, he's uh, telling them this because it's in direct correlation with Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus was coming here with a message to give. Think about this for a minute. I want to get your thoughts going, your mind going here tonight. Jesus stayed in a small area as what we know Israel, right? Now, it's interesting that he stayed here, and yet Paul had the liberty to leave that area. The gospel, the New Testament church, would ex eventually expand and go beyond the borders of Israel in just a short little while. But I want you to understand, Jesus was following the leading of the Lord. He, he was following and staying under the direction of the Lord. And I understand they're, they're one and the same, but he was following the leading. He stayed in a certain area. God would direct Paul in a different direction. God would direct Paul, as we're seeing on Sunday nights, in a different way. Paul would go much further than Jesus did. There are different journeys Paul would take. Jesus stayed in one little area. And by the way, that one little area would be the sending church that would send, uh, would send Paul on his journeys. So what was his message? His message was the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God, sometimes you'll see in the, the book of Matthew, you'll see the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. There's been a lot of speculation and a lot of discussion as to what these are. I believe you can use them interchangeably. I believe Jesus does so. And I believe there's different areas we could go to. We're not going to do that tonight. But you could go to um, Matthew chapter 19 and you'll see both of them used interchangeably. Uh, but I believe in its basic sense, I believe the kingdom of God 
involves repentance and new birth as God rules in the hearts of his children in this world in preparation for a new kingdom that will eventually be set up here. We find this message that he'll be teaching. I, there's a lot going on with the, the kingdom of God and all of these things, but I believe at its core, Jesus is teaching, you need to put your faith in me. Salvation. Salvation. The kingdom of God is used interchangeably in, in Matthew chapter 19. And one day we'll experience this, uh, this new kingdom that he will set up eventually and that he will build. That he will build. I believe he's preaching salvation. He was inviting people to come into the kingdom of God. In order to come, they had to repent of their sins and believe the gospel. His 12 are with him. And he invests in these 12 ordinary men. Of course, one would eventually turn back the one Judas. But we see he's coming, he's preaching, he's teaching, he's going from town to town. He had a purpose, he had a mission. Now look at verse 2 if you would. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna. God had somehow done a mighty work in these three women's lives. We don't know a lot about uh, Susanna. We don't know a lot about Joanna. We see her later on um, going to the grave or uh, with Jesus, with Mary Magdalene later on. We'll see her again. But I want to look at the, the, these, their lifestyle just for a moment. Um, in conventional thinking back in that day, women were looked down upon. So for a rabbi to have women follow him, and do these things for them. This was against conventional thinking. Jesus broke with Jewish tradition and the strict social divisions of his day. Uh, I'll read this for about Joanna. Joanna no doubt stepped down from her aristocratic social position when she chose to follow Jesus. So her husband was employed by Herod and the idea of steward is probably the idea of his manager possibly his financial manager. That's kind of what it seems to be. So Herod, you remember when Jesus was sent from Pilate to Herod? Did Herod accept Jesus? Everybody awake tonight? Herod, did he accept Jesus? What did he do? He said, you know, you can come here. I want you to do some tricks. But basically, Jesus didn't say anything, so Herod would send him back. Now, Herod had a steward, a manager, and that manager was probably paid, paid, uh, paid pretty well, and he had a wife. That wife had somehow found Jesus, and Jesus had done something for this lady, and she had turned to Jesus. Herod would not listen to what Jesus would have to say, but would send him back to Pilate. But this woman was different. Take your Bible, go to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. I just want to give some thoughts on, I find this very fascinating and interesting. People who say, and I've heard this said multiple times, God hates women and God demeans women. Man, I, that frustrates me and for many reasons. Luke chapter 24, and I want you to look down at verse, verse 10. It was Mary Magdalene and who? Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women which were with them, which told us these things unto the apostles. But we find here a woman, a short time before, eventually would, may not follow Jesus everywhere he went, but was certainly in the area and around and followed him all the way up to his death and even after his death, believed in him and trusted in him. These were women who showed real faith. And I want you to see what their faith led them to do. Not only did they follow him, not only did they have certain things and they had an estate. And they, uh, some people believe that uh, Joanna, the Bible doesn't tell us a lot about her. As a matter of fact, this gospel is the only one that tells us her name. That's why some believe that Luke got some of his information from Joanna from following Jesus. But that's neither here nor there. But we find here this woman, some believe she went undercover because her husband worked for Herod. So some believe somehow Jesus had maybe healed her of something, maybe, I don't know if it was demonic oppression, maybe the sickness, but she truly believed that this was the Messiah. She believed in him with all of her heart. And you know what they had? 
Notice what they had in verse 3. And Joanna, the wife, would, however you pronounce that, you guys are chuckling whenever I say that word, so I'll let you say it in your head. Herod's steward and Susanna and many others, which what? Ministered unto him of their what? The word substance is the idea of possessions. So what had Jesus done for them? He had healed them, and they believed him, and by believing him, they followed him, they went around with him. But not only that, because of the Jesus made on their lives, they used what they had to push his, uh, push his agenda forward, to push his ministry forward. Does everybody see what they're doing here? They're using what they had for his glory. And my friend, I love this pattern, uh, studying this afternoon, these three verses, I love this pattern. When Jesus has done something for us so great, which he has everyone in here if you've been saved, you take what you have and you use it for his glory, you use it for his agenda, you use it to advance his cause, which is preaching and teaching the kingdom of God. That's the pattern, not only. Now, but also in the New Testament church. And these women found that out and they understood that. Even though one of their husbands had a high rank in Herod's area and had probably had a lot of finances. Uh, most believe that that was uh, Herod's financial manager and she was probably very well taken care of. And she used what she had to advance his cause. This is their attitude. They have something to offer him. The word ministers is the idea, and I may mispronounce this, but diakonio, diakonio, I believe. And it's the idea where we get the word deacon from. And it's the idea of ministering to and helping, using what they have. Not everyone Jesus helped is named in Scripture. Not everyone who helped take care of Jesus is named in Scripture. You remember Jesus, he went about, he didn't necessarily have a place to lay his head. He didn't necessarily have a place he called home that he would go back to all the time. So everywhere he went, he would depend upon people. And this was one of those individuals who used not only her finances, but used the resources and connections she had to help his agenda move forward. Because she understood how important Jesus was. And listen to this, she understood how important his message was. There's a lot of religious people today. They understand that God is important. They understand that Jesus is important. But they're doing absolutely nothing with what God has given them to advance his cause. My friend, in the church, we all ought to take it personally that we need to advance his cause and use what we have. I love the illustration we see in this story. By welcoming women like Joanna into his inner circle, Jesus broke Jewish tradition. Some people would say, well, he's not a real leader because he allowed her, and he's not a real leader because he did this. He's not the Messiah because he did this. Jesus went against the grain here. And these women understood who they were talking to and what he had done for them. My friend Christian, listen very closely. Please don't miss this, sir. Your life as a Christian is going to be miserable. When you forget what he's done and how great it was, you won't want to use what you have. But if you look back and remember, he did this for me. Now, he delivered Mary Magdalene from demon possession and somehow delivered these other women from either sickness or disease or something. They recognized what he had done for them. But my friend, we've been delivered from an eternity in hell and we can look back and say, and some of you have experienced, God healed you, physically speaking too. And God has provided for you, maybe financially. God has given you something that you didn't see coming. You can look back and you can say, wow, what a savior. Now, what are you doing with what you have now? This isn't a sermon on financial stewardship, necessarily. It's, it's not that. The Bible doesn't say they use their money, but that was part of their resources, so that was part of what they would use. It encompasses everything you own, everything you have, your talents, your abilities. They use this for the Lord. Not only that, but I find it interesting that not only do we find them here, but we find them sharing the good news of the resurrection later on. Not Susanna, we don't see they mentioned later, even though she could have been. But we see Joanna and Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene will play a big part. Listen closely. There are a lot of people get excited. And then they kind of wear off and just kind of fade back. Not these two ladies. They were in it for the long haul. 
because of what Jesus had done for them. So you have a woman who is demon-possessed. You have a woman who was from the highest possible state in the land, Herod's estate. She is the wife of the man who managed Herod's properties. And then you have a nondescript woman named Susanna. Do you see how Jesus uses people? He used a woman demon-possessed. We know that. He used a woman who had means. We see that beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then we see a woman who we know nothing about. And he used her. You know what the central theme of all this is? Jesus. I find this very fascinating here. The, 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 the idea of the way he used these women and what they did for him. They ministered. They took action. They would attend to. They were servants to. It became a big deal to them. Now, when much people were gathered in verse 4, we're, we're not going to do the whole parable tonight, all right? Everybody take a deep breath. We're, we're going we're to be done here, all right? Don't get nervous. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. So now Luke describes what these women did for Jesus and probably maybe paid for, maybe paid for a hotel room or bought a, paid for an Airbnb back then or maybe bought a new donkey. Who knows what they did, but they used their resources his ministry and advance his cause. Then notice what happens. People start coming from all over to here. And now Jesus is going to teach a parable. A parable he'll describe, and most of you know it, as the parable of the sower. Notice we begin in verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. It was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. Some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell among thorns and thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him saying, what might this parable be? Now, we'll describe more of these uh, next Wednesday, but I want to read just a little bit here. The wayside was the path where people walked and nothing could grow. The rock was the soil with a, a thin layer of soil on stony shelf. Nothing could go there. There was, there was no root to take, take hold. There were some among thorns, and some people took it and uh, grew for a bit, and then would be choked out. Some fell on good ground. We'll see here in just a moment, he's talking about the gospel and how people receive the gospel message and how sometimes we get discouraged. But the Bible is very clear. Some are going to hear it, some are not. Some will be hard-hearted. Some it will seem to take root, but it really won't. Later on, they'll be choked, they'll leave. But it's interesting. As he sets us to this great parable that has been taught on several times, all of you know the parable, I'm sure. All of you have heard the parable preached on. But before that parable, he teaches about three, other than one of them, two of them were very little known women who made a great impact. And you understand, it's not about the women. It's not about them. It's not about the disciples. It's about who advanced Jesus' cause. It's all about him. It's all about what they used to push it forward. And now a big group came to hear and Jesus would teach this lesson. But I find it fascinating that he used three women. Not very well known. Probably not very well liked, some of them. Possibly one was undercover, maybe. Didn't want her husband to find out where she was. I don't know. He used these women who used what they had. And advanced his cause. They use their substance. They use their possession. I hope we'll take from this and use it in our lives and say, there's some things I could use better. There's some more I could give. There's some more I could do to advance his cause. We'll leave the results up to him. We'll leave the rest up to him. But I know I've been slacking. I've been, I, I know I can do more. I know God's done this for me and God's done that for me. And maybe just, maybe I just need to use, I've got to, maybe, maybe I've, I can just have a good attitude in church. I can just get there and I can be the most excited person in that building. Or maybe I can do this or I can do that. I can use what he's given me because of what he's done to advance his cause to the greater good, the kingdom of God. And this is the message that needs to be shared. We'll get into that parable next week. Heavenly Father, God, we do love you. Lord, what a fascinating passage of Scripture.
God, we find these three ladies who would serve you in a great and mighty way. Only heaven truly knows the sacrifices they made and what they did for you, God. But Lord, I know now, as they're in heaven today, they don't regret one penny they gave. They don't regret one action they did. I'm sure, Lord, they feel you've blessed them greatly. Lord, we love you. I pray we each one of us would learn from this story of these three little known ladies in your word. Help us all to be encouraged. Help each one of us to try to do more for your cause and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would. Take your prayer list. Find somebody to pray with. Um, let's spread out through the, through the church here. Just find a pew and get with somebody. Ask them if you can pray for them about something. And uh, let's all find somebody to pray with. Let's take some time and let's be quiet when we're done.